Hey, Typology Tribe, Ian Morgan Cron here, your host on the show where we explore the mystery of the human personality through the lens of the Enneagram. Today is a really big day. I have looked forward to this conversation for weeks. I'm here with my great friend, Don Miller of Story Brand fame. Don, welcome to Typology. It's good to be back. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I love this conversation. <laughs> Me too, man. Listen, I am I'm so excited about a new collaboration or a partnership that, that you and I are, are doing together. Can you describe it for folks? Well, we have done it. Yes. It's done. Uh, years ago, probably uh, 12 years ago, some friends of mine told me about the Enneagram and we're all searching these books and blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, but now everything is about online videos, right? And they're all pretty bad. Mm. <laughs> and so I approached Ian and I said, I approached you and I said, will you, we, we spend a lot of money. We spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on our courses and stuff. And I, will you do one on the Enneagram? And can we make it a low priced course so that everybody can see it, but it's really beautifully done because I think this is going to change lives. So we actually created something called Enneagram Made Simple. And we filmed uh, for a day, uh, Ian, everything he knows about each type. And we put it at EnneagramMadeSimple.com, and we made it really low-priced. And uh, it's available now. It is. And, and, and how do you get it? You go to EnneagramMadeSimple.com, and you buy it. And until uh, November 7th, I think, uh, you get a buy one, get one free. That is, if you buy a course... E, you can put an email address in for a friend or a coworker or, or, or a family member, and you can send it to them and they get it for free. And it also comes with all of my Business Made Simple courses. So it comes with my marketing course, my messaging course, how to write your mission statement, how to find your mission in life. That's a whole course. It comes for free as a bonus when you buy Ian Cron's Enneagram Made Simple. It's at EnneagramMadeSimple.com. We didn't intend to start this with an ad. <laughs> we intended to start with you and me just talking. But that's the reality, and it's going through uh, November 7th. Well, I, I'm not embarrassed about starting with an ad because I'm I'm just so excited about making this content available in a, in a new yeah, format Yeah, the thing is people. you read these books, and you know it, it's a deep dive. It takes a lot of time. But for me, uh, when I read a book that I really like, I look and see if they have an online course, and I want to do both because I really want to. I want to understand the information, and I'm a, more, I'm a little more of a visual learner. Hmm. And then uh, this course actually comes with a workbook that you can fill out. There's all sorts of questions on it and stuff like that. So it's also uh, available if you want to buy the course for yourself, but have ten people over and watch it. You're completely able to do that. Hmm. And so it's a great way to learn the Enneagram from right. the master of the Enneagram, <laughs> Ian Morgan Cron. You don't you don't think you're the master, do you? I don't. I don't think of myself that way. I mean, I. I but do you? You know, you know I, do you, tell me if this is true about you. When I wrote my first, I always wanted to be a writer. And when I was in high school, I wrote myself a letter saying you're going to be a best-selling author someday. I wrote a book, and it was a full year, have after having written that book, until somebody could come up to me and say, you know, as a writer, I'd really like your advice. I could never identify as a writer until enough people had told me I was a writer. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, it's an identity. The identity didn't happen overnight after I became a writer. I had, people had to tell me that. Now I go, oh no, I'm a writer. It's what I do. This is 100 percent part of my identity. I don't think you fully realize that you are maybe the world's leading expert on the enneagram, or at least perceived that way. And I think maybe, but, but you are. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's why we went after you. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'd say that um, it is hard for me to take on the mantle of of that identity and um, you're also one of the I would think what people don't know is one of the world's leading experts on emotional intelligence and Enneagram is a is a part of that mm. uh, but yeah there's no nobody I think of uh, anymore regarding the Enneagram than you well I mean there's some few a few but uh, I looked at your books and stuff so well thanks man I it's it, I'll tell you this the whole the Enneagram journey for me mm -hmm. has been such a beautiful surprise I mean I'm 58 years old hmm. And, and just getting started. Just getting started. I mean, do you know what a gift that is? There, there aren't very many human stories where there, where you've had a, an incredible career as a writer and as a counselor and as a member of the clergy. Uh, but at 58, you're right. To get the big thing started yeah. is really fun. I feel like it's such a Some days I get up, and here's what I get excited about. Okay, and so you know, I don't talk about this very much here on Typology, but I get to get up every morning and make 
a living, a, you know, a, a good living, legitimately helping people. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, that's amazing to me. Like, that's like the best of helping them discover themselves, helping them know their liabilities, helping them know their strengths and their superpowers. That sets somebody free in many ways. Oh, and and for me as a therapist and as a as a person of faith, I mean, that brings all this meaning to my life. And I, I would say too, it's like, for me, the way I position it and experience it in my own life is nothing is more exciting than co-journeying with people and saying, hey, I'm learning about me and about life. And I'd love to have you come along if you want to. And let's figure it out together. So I don't feel like I'm an expert. Maybe that's the thing. I don't feel like a master. I feel right. like someone who's on the journey with people. And maybe I know a little bit more about the content of the Enneagram than other people. But I don't feel, nor do I want to perceive myself as the guy that you know, is at the front of the class and uh, delivering content and communicating the idea of like, well, once you know this, you will have arrived where I am. I don't really feel that way. Yeah. I, I don't even want to live that way. I actually do want to journey with other people. You know, I've studied the Enneagram, though, for 10 years, pr pretty in depth, I would say. You know, I've read pr probably mostly everything on the Enneagram, just because it's such a fascinating journey. But I sit down to talk to you, and you're talking about things I've never heard of. Mm. So I think a lot of us, this is a great topic for just the, the conversation between us as two people who lead and, and who uh, are thought leaders, I guess, in some way. Um, a lot of people, when they step into a realm where they express their expertise, they deal with imposter syndrome. Mm. And one thing that I always say to those guys is, do you think you know 10 times as much about this than the average person? And they all say yes. And I say, well, then you're not an imposter. You're comparing yourself to the world's leading expert ever in the history of the world, and that and that makes you feel like an imposter. But don't do that. Can you get me somewhere uh, that I couldn't have gone without you? Okay, well then get me there, right? Mm. And uh, I would say you're you're much more the enneagram guy than you think, though. Yeah, well, you know, probably good for my to keep the <laughs> the inflation of my head to a sort of a minimum, you know, not to think of myself in, in, in that category because I, I love the conversation. I'm about, I'm the guy about yeah. the conversation. Yeah. And uh, so that, in the heart well, to the, heart the, stuff. the world's greatest guitar player got there because he loves picking at the guitar. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there yeah. you go. All right. So let's talk about the Enneagram and, and, and your life. And today I kind of want to dive a little deeper into your experience with it. And um, because, I, you know, we've spoken about it in terms of business, we've spoken about it in terms of story. Um, I want to know what the Enneagram has revealed to you about you that makes you uncomfortable. Hmm. The, you know, when I operated more out of my four wing, I'm a three with a four wing, uh, I was much less comfortable with who I am as a person than I am now. And I think mm. there's also a lot of other healing that has taken place, a lot of dealing with codependency, a lot of, you know, I found my father after years of never having known him and, and sort of resolved some story loops in my mind, getting married to a wonderful uh, woman who has been healing for me. Betsy is a loyalist. She's a six. So there's a lot of things that the Enneagram, but it, I think without the Enneagram, I don't know that I would, that any of those things would have happened because I would have just thought this is the way life is. And instead, I kept reminding myself, no, this is actually a lie that you believe. Mm. And it doesn't have to be you. And, and so just that constant reminder, I think, improved things dramatically for me. So, so whatever type you are, there are just some lies that you believe, right? And, uh, and, and you don't actually have to judge yourself for believing those lies, but just being aware of them, it, it, it really changes the way you live, right? Just saying, oh, you're doing that thing again. So as an Enneagram 3, I would say, oh, you're doing that thing again where you think you're not going to be accepted unless you are perceived as a winner. But I offer no judgment, right? That's just a survival mechanism, that, that and, and it's, a, it's a wave that I surf, if you will, and it gets me a lot more, there's a lot more, uh, you know, assets than liabilities with, that, with my personality type. So, um, but I, th I think that's where the healing has come in, especially when I was operating at a 4, my four wing. I, I thought for years I was a four with a three wing, um, but now I'm operating so much in a three that there's just no way it, it would have to be a three with a four wing back in the day. But um, the, the the need to to be special, to be different, to be always marginalized, to be one of the people, to be one of the outcasts, one of the people who's not actually accepted, 
I mean, I look back and I go, what a bunch of hogwash. I can't believe I even believe that. Mm. But, you know, there were all these great groups of friends that I felt like I'm on the outside. I'm not like you guys. I'm just like those guys, right? Mm. And, and I wish, I would love to have gone back and lived through that again and been able to um, understand that I was completely accepted, uh, you know, and, and not have been a little bit of a victim-y pity party. When I look, now that I've moved so much into my three, looking back, that's the part that I think makes me the most uncomfortable was uh, a bit of a mindset of victimhood or self-pity, which I think is, is cancerous uh, if you want to have an impactful life. So that, that, would make, that would have made me uncomfortable back then. I would say these days, 95% of that is, is really gone. But, you know, that, that goes back to what I was saying earlier. If you, if, you, if, you, if you tend to default in victim mode, so here's how you know, because a lot of people who live as victims don't know it, that they complain a lot. Uh, they, f- they have an external locus of control. The problem in the world is, is my spouse, my kids, my job, my government. Uh, if, if the problems in this world that are driving you crazy are outside of you, you probably have a victim mentality because mm-hmm. you have an external locus of control. And that's associated with high rates of anxiety, depression, lower wages, you know, just go down the road. So I think um, being aware and saying, hey, you know, the government really is crap, but it's really, it's not, it's not affecting me as much as people want me to believe, hmm. right? What's really affecting me is that I'm, I'm getting up at 8.30 instead of 7.30 or 6.30. What's really affecting me is I'm not applying myself in my work. What's really affecting me is some of the people who criticize me, actually, they actually might be right. I might need to change some things. That's internal locus of control. It's associated with higher wages, less depression, less anxiety, uh, and more satisfaction in life. So I think that's been a transition that that uh, I've, I've a journey that I've been on for the last week, 15, 20 years has been really helpful. So you migrated in terms of self understanding and self awareness from thinking I'm a four to really saying you know what actually I'm a, I'm three. a three with a four wing. Right. What was there a moment where you that that light went on and you went yeah there it is no it w- it, it was in hindsight hmm. and and part of it I'm curious from your perspective uh, as a memoirist sitting alone in a coffee shop writing a book you can live out of your four wing all day as mm-hmm. soon as you run a company and you have team members who are depending on you to make you know I have a small company but we have to make about twenty thousand dollars a day if we don't make if we don't make twenty thousand dollars that day. We have to, and let's say we make 10. I got to make 30 the next day. Let's say you make 15. I've got to make whatever, 35, 45 or whatever. I'm now lost with the math. Yeah, Kyle, I'm anxious right now. When you have, <laughs> when you have that kind of pressure on you, uh, you, you got to cut the pity party. Mm-hmm. You have to wake up and you have to make, not just for, this isn't for you. This is just to keep the team alive. Mm-hmm. And then you have to make more than that if you want to make any sort of progress. And so I think um, the four wasn't going to work. Mm. And so I think if I would have stayed a memoirist and tried to write the great American novel, I don't know that I would have evolved the way I've evolved mm. uh, in, into more into my three wings. So I'm curious. Partly time, I think, changes our wings a little bit. But for me, it was just... The, so I woke up about five years into a company and realized whatever that pity party thing that was going on to me is is almost gone mm. okay but it's just to be clear are you a three with a four wing or a four with a three wing? three with a four wing okay so i just wanted to make sure that we were we were clear about that and then there's this fundamental shift in self-understanding right which yeah. changes everything yeah right i mean it, it that's a huge shift um, when you if you care if you are just aware yes of you're doing that thing where you x mm-hmm. right mm-hmm you're, you know, so, so for my wife as a six, she would say, uh, you're doing that thing where you go to worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. Now, she wouldn't judge herself or try to stop herself from doing that. Just the self-awareness actually changes. Mm. Mm-hmm. So one of the things we talk about for each of the nine types is each of them has a journey. They have, we, we talk about each one having a deadly sin or a passion. Yeah. Right. Same word. Or same concept, and, and every one of them has a virtue that they have to work on acquiring, right? Right. Or, and so, for example, for ones, it's serenity, right? It's it's being able to look at the world and with a, and accept a, it as it is. A, and, yeah. Exactly, right? So the serenity prayer, God, give, 
you know, grant me the serenity to accept the things I would say I cannot fix or improve. Right, right. Uh, to accept, uh, you know, so on and on. You know, for a two, um, you know, they have to move from arrogance to humility. A three needs to move from deceit to honesty or authenticity. The four has to move from envy to equanimity. Uh, and the five has to move from avarice to generosity, right? The six has to move from uh, fear to faith, right? The seven has to go on a journey from gluttony to sobriety, not meaning abstinence from a chemical or something like that, but just sort of Moderation. focused. Focus, yeah. Focus on what, you know. And, uh, eight has to move from, um, you know, this lust, you know, for a life thing, this lust, you know, really to a place of innocence. And, and I, would, I would say that innocence is the ability to live with open, an open-heartedness without cynicism. Right. And then finally, the nine has to move uh, from sloth to to diligence or right action. Right. So this is the journey. So the Enneagram also offers us a growth path, unlike any other personality assessment or typing system. Right. The, the we get a growth path. Right. right. So now you got to move as a three from deceit. Right. And often let's, let's phrase that out a little bit more. Self-deceit, deception, meaning the ability to um, to wear masks, right? And then the deceit is beginning to believe that the mask you're wearing is actually who you are. Right. Right. So you have to move from deceit to honesty or authenticity. Where are you on that journey? Maybe it's something I haven't started yet, but, but to me, in, integrity is really important. Uh, you know, not telling lies. And I think that actually comes out of the four wing that authentic self. Mm -hmm. So being honest about where we are, where we need to go, uh, those kinds of things. So, you know, and maybe, maybe I'm not self-aware, Ian, but when I hear deceit, I go, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think of Richard Nixon. I think of Donald Trump. A six I think though. Of, Nixon was a six. Nixon was a six. Oh, yeah. I think of people who tell lies. Uh -huh. People look in the camera and they, they say things that aren't true. So define what you mean by deceit. Yeah. So that's a, it's a, it's a, it's yeah. a, it is an important distinction, right? So when we talk about deceit for the three, people often think like, okay, he's, he's a schmoozer. He's a shtick guy. You know, he's trying, right, he's right. trying, he's putting on one mask after another to kind of make the sale or to win the admiration of the group, right? Right. Um, and so, you know, they become poster children of whatever group they happen to be with, right? Because they want that group to see them and admire them for being the, the paragon of the group's values and expectations. Okay. Okay. But um, often what happens for the three is really self-deceit. I don't think threes intentionally walk into a room and consciously say to themselves, Okay, what kind of a shtick do I need to put on right now to right. to win the room and win their admiration and their love, you know, and to appear successful at all costs so that they go, "Wow, Don Miller, he is the bomb." You know, you know, I think a very not healthy 3 is kind of operating in that space. Really what I mean by deceit is the 3 in the course of a lifetime can adopt so many masks to win over others, to appear successful, uh, to be the paragon that embodies all the values and expectations of whatever group they happen to be in, that they forget their true self. They lose touch with their true self. And, and they go, well, I just feel like I am a kaleidoscope of masks. Who am I? Yeah, that's interesting. That, that is, I th and maybe Ian, because my journey is so many memoirs, like seven of them. I am no longer asking who I am. Great. I, I've just, I have zero interest in it. I, I've, and that may be unhealth. You can tell me. I will tell this. If, if I'm, if I'm self-aware, I'll say, you and I right now are sitting in a studio that cost a lot of money to build in a beautiful home on 15 acres outside of Nashville that's costing a lot of money to build. The studio is, we've got finished before the house. The house is still under construction, but you and I are in a studio. What does that tell you? An Enneagram 3 is going to look good. The first thing that's going to get finished is the thing that has the backdrop and the cameras and the correct lighting and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. If that doesn't tell you my personality, nothing else will, right? And then we didn't, Betsy and I didn't need a house this big. You know, this house is, it's, it, it is a house and then there's an event space and there's a guest house. So partly she comes from a family of seven and at a family reunion, you have 100 people. We needed tons of beds and we had to figure out how to do it. 
And then we have executives come in and we do some things with them. But all of that could have been done with hotel conference rooms, right? But I wanted to do it in a home that we call Goose Hills, named after our chocolate lab, Lucy Goose. And, uh, and, and there's, a, there's probably a reason for that. It is to impress people. So I'm self-aware enough to know, you know, a big part of my motivation was to impress people to build this. But then the other part of me goes, and with this, we're going to provide a lot of jobs. We're going to provide a lot of clarity to a lot of executives about where their companies are going. We're going to help them sell a lot of products uh, that hopefully solve problems. Uh, we will do multiple fundraisers here that will raise millions of dollars every year for, like, my, my wife serves on the board of a human trafficking organization. Uh, so we're going to help stop human trafficking. Uh, there's probably going to be some political leaders. There was a, a United States ambassador was just here a few weeks ago, and the House wasn't even finished. The, in other words, I'm constantly going, okay, you know, Don, you don't need to build a big, nice house to get people to love you. However, it certainly feels really good to be impressive, and we're not you. I'm leveraging whatever that wound is in me for a great good. And so it's not motivating me to do any work to fix whatever it is because I don't. Does that make sense? So I'm a, I, let me ask the therapist in Ian Morgan Cron. Am I? Is there a better place for me to go to where where I'm not being self deceived? You know, am, I, I, do you see a person who's putting on masks, or do you see a person who goes, "Yeah, we all have wounds." Don's operating a lot out of a wound, but he's 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 mitigating some of the damage of that and using it for the the betterment of the world, the way any other personality type would, a two, a four, an eight, a nine. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, because I know you and I've seen you in multiple settings, one of the things I would say is I do see consistency, which to me— Consistently wounded? Yeah, no. <laughs> well, what I don't sense is that, I, you know, I don't think you're a different person in different settings. Right, because I don't identify with that a whole lot. Right. So, I, In fact, there, there are some settings— where I know I could succeed, like, like for instance, an evangelical or religious setting. I spent a lot of time there. I could go in there and I could succeed, but I don't want to do it. Right. It's not, it's not really who I am anymore. Right. I mean, I am, I'm a, a, my wife and I pray to Jesus, don't get me wrong. This right. is me. But that's not, that's not the culture that I operate in anymore. Right. So I would say that you've moved in a direction of health to n- not feel the need to um, adopt a self-presentation that is to win the admiration of the crowd dominantly. You are aware that that is a tendency or Mm -hmm. a a weak spot in the plumbing that you have to be careful and watch uh, because that's at that weak spot, that's where it's going to, the plumbing's going to break and the water's going to flow. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. In ways that you don't want. Um, I would continue to, if I were your counselor, to lean into saying, Don, um, where are you on the journey toward the authentic self, the true self? And, and, and that's a complicated, actually a complicated idea. It's one that I would give to everybody because we all sure. are on that journey. I mean, listen, look, you're a story guy, right? People ask me, someone asked me recently, who's your spiritual hero? And I went, Pinocchio. I love that. I yeah. love the story of Pinocchio. You got a guy who's born unreal. He wants to become a real boy. You know what I'm saying? And, but he knows I'm not real yet. So in order to get there, he has to go on a journey. He has to have all kinds of misadventures. Yeah. And then he's got to die to himself at one point while he's saving, you know, Geppetto. And then he comes, he, he's resurrected. And he, uh, there's a beautiful moving moment as a four where he says to the, the blue fairy, I think it is, he says, uh, am I a real boy now? And she says, yes, Pinocchio, now you are a real boy. And that is so moving because I, and, and it's such an archetypal story to move from real, unreal to real. I think that's a particularly important journey for a three, but for all types, yeah. but for you in particular to move from unreal to real. And I, and I feel like the story of Pinocchio is in part, the story of becoming unreal to real is in part the story of Don Miller, Growing up in Houston, Texas, standing in line for government cheese, discovering he can write, writing memoirs, believing he's a victim and he's marginalized and he doesn't fit, to becoming who I am today. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So uh, there was a ton of healing that the Enneagram was a big part of that allowed me to get to the place where it's like, no, I'm actually not marginalized. I'm accepted. People like me. Uh, 
my voice isn't some distant voice in the wilderness that nobody's listening to. A lot of people are listening to it, and I should take responsibility for it. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. So I wonder how much of that healing is there. So I, I, I guess what I'm saying is, man, you know, I, I, sometimes I get criticism, criticized, and people say, I wish you'd go back and, and write those memoirs that you used to write. Well, one, you, you know, I wrote seven. So the, you know, if you write eight, you're a <laughs> clinical narcissist. Like, go back and read the seven, please. You right. know, the, the world does not need an eighth memoir from Donald Miller. Um, I, you know, I fundamentally believe that. But that Donald Miller was 387 pounds, could hardly pay rent, didn't believe that a woman could be in a relationship with him and be fulfilled. That, those are the things, that was what my life. So when they say, I wish you'd go back and write those, I just say, no, heck no. So, you, are you kidding me? Sure. Like, no, you're asking me to be, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. And so part of me goes, okay, maybe what's happened is now I'm in this place where I've got to do a whole nother level of healing, right? From whatever, you know, maybe I haven't even discovered my wounds, which, you know, it would be an incredible journey to, to go, you kidding? I get to do this again? I get to transform again. The cat, the, 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 the caterpillar became a butterfly and the butterfly is going to become a pigeon. I mean, this is awesome. I'm, I'm fully up to it. I'll become a pigeon. All right, so, so I guess just to answer, to fully answer the question, then, or or to sort of lean into it, if I were your counselor, I would really be pressing you to say, "Have you stalled? Have you have you hmm. stopped? Has the journey, the journey of the soul, has it stalled as you have pursued other interests, which are more external in some ways Very than they were so. internal at one time, where they maybe exclusively internal, right?" But have you now stalled on the internal journey? You, you know, here, here, this will reveal something, and I mean this as a confession. You've asked this question basically twice in, in this interview, and the dominant question that comes up in my mind when you ask it is, what's that going to cost me? Mm-hmm. Right? It's going to cost me a chance to change the American tax code. It's going to cost me a chance to build a billion-dollar company. It's going to cost me, and honestly, I want those things more than I want the self-awareness. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I mean that as a confession. Mm-hmm. And the question is, can you, because there's so, there's so much riding in the balance. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I, I would say, if I, you know, and now that I know it, I might lean into this as a friend, <laughs> to, to keep encouraging you to not uh, ignore the journey of the soul. Um, because you will eventually reach a point when the story you're living now will have exhausted itself. And you will have to, I believe, you'll have to transition from the the journey of proving adequacy um, to the journey of, how do we put it this way? To move from the journey of the parable of the talents to the journey of the prodigal son. Hmm, and you're going to have to explain that. Well, you know, the, the, the parable of the talents, you know, you, you've got a guy, he's been given gifts, uh, some right. bury them, some leverage them, right? He's super careful not yeah. to lose them. Right. And, but others risk. really, they, get, they yield dividends, right, right, on what they do. And I think for, for a lot of people, that first half of life is the parable of the talent. It's like, how do I take what I've been given and leverage it as far as I can, all of my potential to reach... That's exactly my every day when I wake up. That's the dominant motivation. Leverage what you've been given for the betterment of more people. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, And it's necessary, and it's actually inescapable for you to do that. But at some point, and I mean, you're in your 40s. 48, 48. 48. So I would say, if I were going to be a prophet, quote-unquote, that at some point on the journey pretty soon there's going to be a call of the soul and i don't know how it's going to come to you but often it i'm I'm going to scare you here a little bit but sometimes it's a crash it's a health crisis uh it's a problem with a child um it's a financial crisis whatever it may be the 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 you will the first journey that you've been on of the parable of the talent will blow apart it will fall apart and in that You'll be a liminal moment, you know, a space where you'll begin to hear your soul saying, what about me? What about me? You've already proven all that stuff. What about me? me? Yeah. Uh, and that becomes the journey of the soul. And I believe that's the prodigal son journey, which is the journey of coming home. 
Uh, it is the second half. I love that. You know, my, my wife tells me that, she, you know, because we talk about the future, where, mm-hmm. this, where things could go. And always one of the options for me personally is I'd love to actually concentrate for a year or two on either a novel or a book of poetry. And she, every time she says, that's the life I want for you. Okay, you got to pay attention to that. <laughs> no, I'm saying There's that. There's no like, money in it. <laughs> th- th- you no, know, this is all, okay, but this is all Enneagram stuff. But you, know, but you know why I don't want to write the novel? You why? Want to, why? I can't beat Steinbeck. Oh, well. And I'm, I, I don't mean that as a joke. I, I understand. Can't, I can't beat him. Right. So I'm not going to try. Do you understand that that actually is negating everything you said in the first <laughs> half of this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, how is it? I want to win. Yeah, but. The best is, it's, it's come, gone. You know, but Cormac McCarthy can give it a try. I can't do it. Well, Annie thanks Dillard. for Annie okay. Dillard can do it. Oh, come on, man. You know, I mean, are you so grandiose to think that you could even get in this? I can't I, get in I that can room. I can read all those guys in a marketing framework. Okay, I can help. I can sell but, more toilet paper than. John hey, but Mister Three, what I'm, <laughs> but but here's what I'm hearing, Mister Three. It's yeah. like, um, in order to uh, win and appear successful, I have to operate at the highest sure, place, yeah. right? That sounds like a lot of self-pity to me that you were talking about in Ooh, the first half. I didn't notice that. You think? Yeah, I think there's a lot of been like, you know, um, you know, if I, you know, I'll never be those guys. I mean, what's the point so in the trying? Floor is still alive. What's the point in trying? Well, you were just telling me to get out of bed in the morning and take responsibility for my own life. Well, yeah, take responsibility you for your creativity and don't deny the rest of us the gift that you have to bring to us. Now, I'm not saying throw out your company and like go back. Right. I, I think it's to actually reclaim some of that dimension of who you are and bring it to us now in this new iteration, this new evolved self that is Don Miller. Hey everybody, I want to tell you about my friend Michael Cusick and restoring the soul. You know, one of the lessons I've learned, Anthony, <laughs> tell me, is that not everybody benefits from a traditional 50 minute hour <laughs> no, or even not. from the typical weekly sessions. And this is why some people, even though they may have a great therapist, can go to couples therapy or personal counseling for months or even years. Some folks, you know, they never really get anywhere if they're just going on a weekly basis. They don't make any progress. That's right. So this is why I'm such a fan uh, and a believer in the intense counseling process at Restoring the Soul in Colorado. Restoring the Soul was created by my longtime friend, Michael Cusick, who helps couples and individuals experience deep change in half-day blocks over one or two weeks. Michael and his team know that sometimes you can't wait months or years, Anthony. That's right. To get to the bottom of an issue or experience breakthrough. So I want you to get a hold of Michael and his team if you really feel like you're in a rut and you can't wait months or years. You can call Restoring the Soul for a free consultation. That's 303 932 9777 and learn how their intensive counseling process can jumpstart your journey or launch you to a whole new place in life. Make sure to visit www.restoringthesoul.com forward slash typology to download their PDF called Anthony. Hey, five ways unaddressed trauma may be derailing your relationships. And now back to our guest. You know, part of the part of the dilemma is um, some of that tapping into some of that stuff, which really does feel good. The two most satisfying writing experiences I've had in the last five years: one was a friend's obituary, and the other was a letter to his son who was born two and a half months later. Wow! Those were the two most satisfying, and that it felt like I was back in the blue like jazz days. Mm. It really did. Because most of the writing that I'm doing now is, um, it's just pragmatic. Right? Yes, it's utilitarian. Yes, and and, I, and by the way, I love it. Yeah, I, I enjoy it very, very much. It's much easier kind of writing. Um, but I think you're right. I think maybe Betsy's right, and and uh, uh, it'd be fun to try to incorporate the two, right? To to incorporate succeeding as a leader and and, a, and owning a company and trying to have some influence with more of this heart. But of course, that's just me talking myself into saying it won't cost you that much. Right. <laughs> but um, I think to live with open hands, to say, I don't know what this is going to cost, but 
to actually be a person of integrity, if we use the word integrity in its root meaning, integritas, meaning wholeness, then I believe that what you and every other type on the Enneagram has to do is recognize I am every age I have ever been. So you are still carrying. You're not a pure type. No right, one is. Right. You still carry within you. That's a great way to look at that it. That four person. Every year is a tool in the tool belt that right. you can bring out. And if you exile or deny that person and throw them into your shadow, they will revisit you. I mean, they will. They will come back and they will they will plead for you to recognize and to own them and to use the gifts they bring to the table. It, it, let me ask you this. Is part of the healing journey that the pendulum actually swings a little too far and then self-corrects? I, I think it can, so for maybe, sure. Maybe that's where I'm at. Yeah. And I, and I think to just be open to the possibility that there is a Don Miller that is yet, and you know this, is yet to be discovered. You, you haven't, you're not at the end of the journey of self-awareness. And, and again, one of the that, reasons I love the Enneagram, right? is you and I automatically right now have a vernacular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? We have a framework mm-hmm. in which to talk about a great mystery. Uh, as I often say, you know, we all have to face two questions every day that are profound mysteries. One is, why is there something from nothing? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a big question. Why is there something from nothing? You know, like, what are we doing here? And the other one is, who am I? And... Um, So that journey is going to keep going for you. And I would argue that if you don't go on that journey, you will risk, you ready? Becoming shallow. That's, yeah. There's nothing worse than being with a three at a dinner party who's still talking about the first half of life agenda, what they've accomplished, what they do, what, how they, you know, whatever. And they're not yet at the journey of the soul. What do you do when it's the opposite, though? The whole first part of your life was the journey of the soul. Well, I mean, um, I think. I mean, all those memoirs actually, I would were, argue were journey of the soul. Not entirely. You I mean, you no, know, no one's pure at that stuff. I mean, I think um, what emerged for you, you know, was partly born out of a story. You were talking about limiting beliefs and sort of a self perception that wasn't entirely accurate, right? Um, now you have found another expression of yourself. Yeah, you may be too far into it at a, at a particular moment. But if you're open and in, in, in looking for integrity or integration, both of those guys have to come home and be together. You, you've done something interesting that I see myself in this transition. You know, last time we were together, we talked about story. I've mm-hmm. studied story yep. a lot. And part, there, there are several characters in a story um, four of the most common are victim, villain, hero, guide. Mm-hmm. There's a victim that the villain has caused to be a, a victim. The hero is attempting to take down the villain in order to rescue the victim. And then there's the guide who is helping the, the hero do this. In, in life, the, 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 the guide, by the way, I think is, is the most, um, certainly the most accomplished character in the story. They're not who the story is about. The story is actually about the hero. But the guide has already conquered the hero's demons and now has turned their energy from conquering their own demons to helping somebody else conquer those same demons. You have you've done that. So in other words, this whole interview has not been about Ian Morgan Cron. This whole interview is about me, and it's about the Enneagram. You're, you're, you're a guide in everybody, all your listeners' story. I think that's why they're listening to you, because you are, you are somebody who's conquered things in your past— and is now leveraging that experience in order to help others, right? I mean, I, I would say that. That's why you've written a book on the Enneagram and, and those kinds of things. Um, and after having written, by the way, memoirs, right? One of yeah. the greatest memoirs that ever ever written. Oh, Jesus, my geez. father, the CIA, and me, right? <laughs> I mean, no, there are people on my staff who've read that book five times. Say it's their favorite book ever. Wow. You know? So uh, it's a wonderful book. So we've had a kind of similar journey. But I also feel like, Ian, as you say... Don't neglect your own journey. Don't look like this. There's part of me that goes, I'm tired of thinking about myself. I'm just tired of it. It's a bo- it's a it's no longer an exciting subject to me. Right? I want to think about I the stopped s- there for a second. Yeah. As you said that, I'm just gonna give you my felt experience Please. of that. It's it feels ingenuine? No, it kind of broke my heart. Why? When someone says I'm no longer interested in me. I'm not saying that you should become well, I don't mean, self-absorbed. I'm no, I'm no longer, yeah, I'm no longer interested in looking at my belly button. I'm interested in what skills I can develop to 
build the things that I'm building and how I'm wired and where I'm hurting people. I'm, I'm interested in that stuff. But to, you know, if you said, Don, you need to write a memoir about your last five years of how you built this company, zero interest. Are you open to the change on that? <laughs> What's in it for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going to help us accomplish our goals? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I just find this conversation moving. And, and, and one of the things I love... I, I do too, I should say. Well, I mean, you and I are, you know, obviously very different. Um, though I have a strong three-wing, you have a four-wing, so we have a lot of good overlap. And, and I think that creates an atmosphere of respect, you know, for the other. And uh, I... I um, one of the things I love in that relationship and I have many with threes is they have called me to, for example, uh, when you write a book like that, create a business, get out something like, you right, know, the yeah. Enneagram made simple. It's not right. enough for you to sit it around been and just for you to do that. Right. No, it, no, because, but I have guys in my life like you and others who say, Hey, you have an obligation right. to create a, let's not say well, a business, let's say, or a organization that can leverage this information, disseminate this information in a way that brings uh, healing uh, and goodness to the world. But that just can't be an idea or an ideal. You actually have to tap into that three-ish thing and, and execute and make it happen. So that has been a blessing to me. And in this conversation, part of what I get excited about is hopefully, you know, leaning into you to say, uh, are, do you over rely on the gifts of the three, sometimes turning the assets of it into a liability? Is it a way at times to defend against the, the soul's call? Yes. Uh, and, and then as a friend, <laughs> as a friend. But it feels so good, Ian. <laughs> I know. But as a friend, to call BS on you. Yeah. Periodically to say, yeah, I think that's BS. I, 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 I believe that there's something higher than this for you, something greater for you. Uh, I think that's my responsibility, and I, I welcome it when you say to me, hey, man, you can't sit around your house reading Faulkner all day. <laughs> it's a good thing, but what about all those people who need to right. hear about this other stuff? For example, I don't want to segue into something completely self-serving, but I am excited about the Enneagram Made Simple thing for that reason. It's like, you know, no, it's not a 500-page tome uh, on, the, on the Enneagram. We're not going to dive into the crazy stuff, nor do I think most people necessarily want to do that, you know, that, that kind of yeah. depth work. But we're going to get some information out there that, that is going to bring healing, insight, illumination, and po new possibilities for people. Like w when we were just talking, I, I actually have a sort of a, a dream that, you know, for example, there are— People in relationships, uh, marriages, let's say, or partnerships, where one person loves to read and the other one doesn't. Mm -hmm. And the ability to sit down with a video course and to watch it together, to do the journey together, um, and, and because it's maybe that's the more native language of one of those people, uh, and, and be able to stop it, start it again, do the workbook, go on the journey together rather than sit in bed reading two books. One's actually yeah. not reading it. You know what I mean? It's like, that thrills me as a four because I feel like I've got a meaningful life now. Yeah. That gives me meaning. And it, my little three wings going, oh, and I get to make a living at it and, and watch something grow and in effectiveness and outreach, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, thank you, too, for uh, affording me the opportunity, giving me the playground, the sandbox in which to develop a part of myself that I would probably not do because it would ask, I'd have to burn too many calories yeah. to go there. But people like you who, who, you know, line, line the course and cheer me on. Yeah. I mean, so we're going to have fun together coming I, up. I think so. You know, let me go back to, to why the Enneagram matters, why typology matters, why the road back to you matters, why Enneagram made simple matters. Earlier I talked about at one time weighing 387 pounds, not being able to pay rent, not, not, real, not thinking I could ever be in a relationship. I didn't get married until I was 42. I mean, it took a long time to figure this out. Discovered the Enneagram probably at 30. So, it was, so I would say it was the number one tool to actually help me realize what I was, how I was sabotaging my life. The number one tool. Now, it, it also integrated with things I learned in on-site workshops, things about codependency, you know, those kinds of, but it's, 
it, it was the number. And, and if you you know if you think about the night and day difference, uh, any, the enneagram got me there. And to to be able to take and to take the enneagram and explain it in non clinical language, in 12, 10 minute videos that you could just sit and watch, I think is a real gift. Totally. And I would actually say you leaned in your three wing to do it. So at the end of the day, threes win. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ian, you know, even a conversation like this would have been incredibly threatening without an understanding of the Enneagram. Right. Right. It would right. have been accusational. And it didn't feel that way at all. It felt like two friends saying, challenging each other. Saying, no, there's a, there's a better path. Well, because we're not arguing about our, our fundamental unconscious motivations and what's going on inside. <laughs> we're not confused about them. And exactly uh, this is a, Right. And so it's like, I don't have to convince you that this is yeah. a problem. Yeah. You've already owned it. Yeah, and you're you're convinced you're, you're telling me it's a problem. I'm saying, but it's a problem I like, and, and no, I mean that in the sense that I know. It needs a change. Yeah, I will also say this just because I need to say it. Um, the two, the two most uh, meaningful writing experiences of the last five years were writing an obituary and writing a letter to the son right. who's who was born two months later. Uh, those are not pleasant experiences. I don't mm-hmm. I don't want anybody to think that the, the I, as soon as I said that and we passed it, I just thought I need to go back. But the ability. To to as a, as you know as a four, to go into this place of extreme empathy, mm-hmm. and how do we how do we bring some healing into what's going on in the emotional swell, and funny water mm-hmm. that is these these horrible tragic situations? I think the the gifting of a four to go there, I think is, is I'm grateful for that. Yeah, we're real comfortable in those. Spaces. You're very comfortable in those places. So, I want to just sort of say we're going to close up here, but I yeah. I I want to just. As a friend, say, like, I've loved this conversation. Yeah, me too. I, you know, Betsy has said about a, a novel and a book of poetry, that's the guy I want to see. Is that what she said? Or she said, I hope, you know, I hope that's the, the path you take. Right. And, and it is, a, and she's not just saying that because that's who she wants to be married to. Right. She also sees me at 75 planting a garden and writing poems about tomatoes, being extremely happy. Mm-hmm. And I'll say yes. That sounds great. It's going to take a lot of money to to pay for this house. So let's do that first. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> but I think a great mantra or lesson to share with other people is pay attention. Yeah. I just think that's so much of life. Pay attention. And so when you hear that, or you know, when you're able to go into the space of writing those pieces that you just spoke about. And to not, I mean, I'm just going to challenge you on it, man. Like, don't devalue or exile from your life that person who wrote Blue Like Jazz. He's not the enemy. And there are pieces of him that are beautiful, that need to be integrated and claimed. You don't have to bring the whole guy back. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's beauty in there that you won't be whole unless he's part of the conversation. That is a good word. Challenge accepted. All right. Hey, everybody. This has been, I mean, every time you come on, we have some pretty- We need to co-host a different podcast. Let's do that. It, it, sh- it should be called Fixing Each Other with Don Miller and Ian <laughs> Oh, oh, golly. Well, you, trust me, if we did that, you could be with me, working on me. We'll, uh, have, our, we'll have our wives on, and it'll just get even more complex. Oh, <laughs> golly whiz. <laughs> Man, I'm I'm excited to be on the journey with you. I am so excited about Enneagram Made Simple. Yeah, EnneagramMadeSimple.com. Yep. Ian doesn't plug his own stuff. That's one of the reasons <laughs> I'm on the show. I do. Um, EnneagramMadeSimple.com. Uh, and take the course. I mean, t- just, just grab it. I think it's 10, 12-minute videos mm-hmm. or 12, 10-minute videos, something yep. in there. And there's a workbook, and you will understand the Enneagram. It is the most cost-effective way of, uh, I think, fully understanding the Enneagram and uh, take your whole team through it, your family through it. Yep. And it's it's fantastic. Yeah. And maybe you, who weigh 387 pounds, can weigh 210 pounds, me only slightly overweight, (laughs) and have a lot of money and a really hot hot smoking wife. (laughs) This can happen to you. Enneagram made simple. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, my good friends, remember the words of the great Oscar Wilde. Be yourself. Everybody else is already taken.